Hi, I'm Victoria and thank you for coming to my channel. All my good ideas were taken. Um, today's video is a tutorial on knit, uh, crocheting a little um, hat for a chihuahua. I was inspired to do this by um, something posted on Facebook. Um, a lady with a little chihuahua named Oscar has the most adorable little hat on this little dog and everybody was commenting about how cute it was and how they wanted one so I thought hmm I can I can make that I can put together a tutorial and then other people can make one too so I've had to kind of wing it the lady was nice enough to post um, up close photos of the hat that she has and I've kind of monkeyed around and I have a version it's not exactly like her hat but I'm working on another version so you'll get this version and then in a little while when I work out the details for another a different style I'll make a video for that one too but for right now um, it's we're gonna follow along or you can follow along while I crochet this little dog hat and uh, if you're new to crochet um, I, I kind of did a little tutorial about how to crochet as I went along if you're in a bit already someone who likes to crochet then I think you'll be okay and once we talk about the ins and outs of the design a little bit you'll be on your way and can just pause the video and take off um, but anyway thanks for watching and let's get started okay so the supplies you're going to need are yarn a crochet hook a darning needle pair of scissors. Any scissors will work. Um, this yarn, the label, is long gone, but it is a worsted weight, four ply. See how it has four strands? That's how you, when it says four ply, that's what it means. That it has four strands. Okay, there you go. Worsted weight four ply. Um, and this is just my sample, it's leftover scrap yarn from old projects. And my crochet hook is, um, let's see, size G. There you go, now you can see it. And I got these little things to go on them. It helps me hang on to it better. I like them. At any rate, what we're going to do. All right, we wanna leave a tail because we're gonna need to weave it in. I like to leave a long tail. That way I have plenty of space to work with when I go to weave it in. So let's start our first stitch put your hook in through here grab the back and pull it through and off your fingers just like that let me do it again tail goes out that way around your fingers and across oops Round and across. That's how it looks. I'm holding it with the pinky. And you just reach in through here, grab the back strand, pull it through, pull the whole thing off. Once you get used to it, it goes really fast. I think it's faster than trying to tie your slip knot and do all this. I don't even know how they do it. So okay. Let me pull out some yarn here to work with. So what we're essentially this little hat is a rectangle and another rectangle. It's this rectangle. There's my tail and then this rectangle. This makes the neckband. This is the head. 
the hood part. So let's start with making the hood part. So we have to cast on, or uh, cast on is not really the right, right term. Um, let me zoom in just a little bit here. Make sure I stay in frame. All right, so we've got our first hook, our first uh, loop on there. We're gonna go one. Well, that counted. This counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many is on this? I forget. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think it's 15. Fifteen, yeah. Okay, so this piece is fifteen stitches across by I believe thirty rows. I'll count the rows here in a minute. But fifteen stitches. So we have to start and this is how I hold my yarn. I'm zoomed in a little too close. You'll, you'll figure out the, what's comfortable for you, how to control it. So we have one stitch, one stitch here, two, three, four, five, six, not focused very well. Come on, focus in. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, now I'm going to do one more, 16, and that gives us the turn. So you want to hold on to it like this and skip this number, that stitch right there, and crochet right into that stitch, just like that. So now you have two hooks, two loops, you're gonna yarn over, and pull through. Now, the next one. This row is a little fiddly because it's it's just this one strand of stitches here, and sometimes it's if the yarn is uh, slipperier. This is pretty coarse, so it doesn't slide around. So it makes it easier. But you just work your way back across. One stitch in each stitch. Right here. Right there. All right, so let's get this done. If you need to pause while you finish yours, you go right ahead. I'll be there when you're ready. Here we are at the very last stitch. Now you want to pay attention here. You have one stitch here and then you have a knot. You don't want to mess with that knot. 
that's where you started your, your row. And if you mess with that knot, this is going to come un unraveled. So just make a stitch and there you go. Now, we finished our row. So we've got to go back across and we're going to do, we're going to crochet 30 rows back and forth across. And it might not look big enough now, but it's going to expand. You'll see after a few rows, it'll be wider than it is now. So okay, we need to turn our row. So you crochet one stitch, turn your work, and then in the very same, here's your stitch. You want to go right here. That way, let me do that again. You want your work to stay nice and square. So, right in this stitch. Just like that. Yarn over and pull through, make a stitch. That's gonna keep your yarn, your uh, work nice and square and not slanting off. And then you just crochet your way across. And uh, you go through both loops. See how the stitch, the uh, row from the top, it looks like little V's. You're putting your crochet hook through. Oh, you can't see because you're putting your hook through both. Well, this is tricky keeping it in camera. Just like that. And then yarning over, pulling it through, yarn over, pull through. From this side, you see these, it's like little parallel lines right here. One here, one here, one here, one here. You're just putting your needle or hook right through there and through that, underneath that V. So, those of you who know how to crochet, which probably is most of you, this is my first uh, crocheting video, first video where I'm showing you how I make my project. I usually just make the project and then I post a video saying, hey, look at what I did, this is super cool. But this time I wanted to do a follow along kind of let's make this together video. A uh, crochet along if you will. Oh, there you go. That's my phone. I just got a text message. <laughs> Alright, now we're at the end of the row. This is the first time we've gotten to the end of the row that looks like this one looks. See, it seem, looks like maybe you don't know where to put your needle, your hook. It's like a, a hump right there. Just put it through. You'll see. It has a V. You see, right there, right there, and right there. You want to catch both sides of that V. So, one side, and then the other side. And then yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. There you go. Nice square row. So now what are you going to do? You're going to crochet one. Turn the work. Oh, that's out of, out of shot. Okay. So you're going to crochet one. Turn the work. Right there, right at the base of that post. And go across again. And you're going to do this 30 times. Because we need 30 rows. So, if you're comfortable 
go ahead and take off make your 30 rows and and then I'll catch up with you here we are at the last of that row again where it's kind of rounded just pick up both sides of your V see right there is one side right there and right there is the other side there's one side and there's the other side turn and go across again now this particular yarn is not going to make a tiny little hat like Oscar is wearing it's going to be bigger um, for demonstration purposes I'm using a larger yarn for a tiny little hat like Oscar is wearing you're gonna want something along the weight of uh, this um, sock yarn you see how tiny that is compared to what we're using here it takes a lot more stitches to make which I'm going to make one with this yarn but to demonstrate I'm doing this yarn and this other yarn is a uh, let's see super fine one ply or it just says one super fine it's a sock yarn it's for making socks okay so at any rate this is an example and once you get this down you can do any size yarn to make this little hat you just have to know the measurements of your dog and uh, add rows or decrease rows and stitches as needed to make one specific to your little dog so all right now I want to go over counting your rows if you lose track like you have to put your work down and walk away from it and you lose track of how many rows you're on here's your row you just did these stitches right here right so so look there's a V that's one row another V is another row another V one two yeah one two three four and your cast on row so we've done four rows so let's do the fifth row crochet one turn crochet in the post and then every stitch across I'm trying to keep this at an angle where you can see what I'm doing but it's Trixie it is Trixie all right so I am going to fast forward to the finished product not the finished product the finished rectangle you can pause this video and crochet your 30 rows see right here we finished row 5 and it goes really quick once you get the hang of it it's such a short row it goes really fast so go ahead and pause the video and do 25 more rows and I'll be here when you get done all right so we finished our rectangle zoom out just a little bit here we finished our rectangle 15 stitches by 30 rows 
So let's put that to the side. Now let's make the neckband. All right, so again, we're going to leave a long tail, cast on our first stitch, Make sure your tail's going out that way. You're not working on your tail because it'll be short, short. All right, so the neck band is five stitches by, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 42 so it's five stitches by 42 rows this goes even quicker because it's only five stitches so we've got one two three oh I need to zoom back in four five and we're going to knit or crochet one more for the turn and then make the turn into the second loop the second stitch from the hook so there's one stitch on we don't count that one the second stitch there's the first one and there's the second one so we're going to crochet right there same like we did with the first um, section And when it's this, when it's the foundation row like this, the base, the you don't go through both sides of the V. You just grab, sorry, I keep getting out of frame. You just grab that one stitch. Because you can see your V, it's facing you. You're only grabbing the top part of that right there. last one beside the knot all right same thing crochet one turn crochet in the post it's exactly the same it's just a shorter row can hear this tapping on the window right outside where the camera is there's a cardinal attacking the window um, we live full-time in an RV and so the windows are uh, reflective they have a reflective whatever you call that stuff tinting so this bird can see its reflection it keeps sitting on the ladder back there and it can see its reflection in the window and it's attacking its to defend its territory repeatedly all day I don't know how it hasn't had a concussion yet because it hits the window hard all right turn and these rows go super fast All right, so I'm going to continue on. You pause the video until you finish your 40, 42 rows and then come back and we'll put it together. So I'll be there. Okay, here we are. Finished and complete neck band. Okay. 
finished and complete neckband. Finished and complete hood section. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this rectangle, fold it in half, and stitch it down the back. Because if you look at this, here is the finished product. This is the rectangle right here, this part. And we just stitch it right down the back. So what you need, we can use this super long tail, see? That's another reason to leave a long tail. So get your darning needle. Mine has a bent tip, which I like. So, thread that needle. I'm pretty sure you know how to thread a needle. Uh, yarn can be tricky. Okay, so we got the needle threaded. Now we gotta line this up. And this could not be any simpler. You're just going to Alright, catch, you want to make sure you get all the way to the end, so catch this uh, stitch right here, and this one, keep them lined up, and then you're going to crisscross it like lacing shoes, grab this stitch here, pull it through, over the top and in through the side. And catch this, this stitch, over the top and through the side. You want to keep them pretty close together. Over the top, each row. You need to catch each row. And just grab through a couple, two stitches so it has a solid grip. I mean a solid hold so that when it right now it's going to look like it. When it's all done it won't be lumpy or have holes. Just make sure you get each row. Get to there, we go. When you get down to the folded area, the corner. You want to make sure everything is nice and tight. So put your fingers in there and spread out the seam and uh, pull on it a little bit so that it will kind of tuck down that corner. See? And then we're going to tie a knot in it. Just Actually, we want to do it inside, so stick your needle through to the inside and flip it out, flip it inside out. So, you're on the inside now. We're going to tie a little knot here. And I tend to go for overkill when it comes to tying off 
weaving in the ends and tying them off. Shoot, I didn't mean to pull that all the way through. Where'd it go? Whatever. We just want to make a knot to keep this point tucked in. So, pulling that down snug and then that so that'll just help keep that from coming back pointy. And then we're gonna just weave this tail down through. And all you have to do is just pick up one stitch. You don't really want this to go through to the other side. So just weave it through the backs of some stitches. We mainly just wanna get the tail away and if and I tend to go back and forth some to hold it because that's what's going to keep your piece from unraveling is how well you hide your tail so I'm gonna go now we'll go back this way way a few times I think that'll be good now I'm gonna tie it off again except here is my paranoia I'm going to cut the yarn about right there take my darning needle and split my strands because I'm psycho so that we have two and two and then I'm going to re-thread it, except I gotta get both strands in there, not just one. Okay. Now, I'm gonna need it at the, okay. So now I'm gonna just do one more stitch, pull those two strands through. So now I can tie a knot in these two strands around that one stitch and I can really make a good solid knot. And one more just for good measure. I get really paranoid about this part. Okay, and now we're on the inside still of the hat. So we have our little knot basically vanishes. So you wanna cut the strings You can see them just a tiny bit right there but they're basically invisible now we'll turn it back right side out and we just have our little hat zoom out because I'm too close all right so this is our hood now we need the neckband so take this neckband And it's designed so that when you stitch it, it's long enough, I mean, you, when you stitch it to the bottom of the hood, you still have extra left over. You have like this much of a tab so that it can fold over and Velcro, see? You can Velcro it shut just like that so let's attach this seam all right now I don't know if this tail is gonna be long enough oh it should be Alright, 
So, let's come back in a little bit closer. Now, we're going to put the two together, line up our ends, our corners, and we're just going to catch the corner stitches, just like that, and do the exact same thing we just did. Actually, I'm going to make a, this corner is going to have some stress on it, so I'm going to do another stitch through here. So now then, we are just going to do it like we did before, over and catch, catch that row and then just like lace in a shoe. Oh now see this? Okay, now look at the bottoms of these rows here. They're different. See, this one has this little arch over the bottom. This was your very first row. So it only has this one little loop right there. This is the top where you finished. And see how it has the V's? That's a solid, that, that'll be a solid stitch through there. Through here, you just have the one strand. So you need to make sure when, as you go along here that you catch a deeper a deeper spot so you have more of a solid base for this binding. So okay. Instead of going there through that little top loop, I'm going to go a little bit further down. Oh right instead of right there I'm gonna go right there pull it through over the top go back over here and just work my way along try to keep them lined up I mean you've got rows cross crisscrossed with rows these rows go this way, these rows go that way. But you could still you could still line it up pretty well. And just work your way around. Now every once in a while I'm going to pull a little bit to take up the slack. Be careful not to pull too hard because it'll draw your whole work up like that and then it won't, it, it'll be all warped. And somebody else will probably watch this and be like, that's not how you do that. Well, this is how I do it. There are a lot of different ways to do the same things in crochet. And uh, people have different ways of, hmm, excuse me, casting on that first stitch. Each person finds the way that they like to do it, what is comfortable for them and quick and works well for them. And so that's how they do it. All right. Now we're at the join here where these two ends, sides come together. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I get a stitch in each corner. Yeah, just like that. And now I got a clear, easy way to see where to put those. Of course, it's only on one side. The other side is still, I hope we got enough thread to make it the rest of the way. Let's pull it up. Okay. It 
stupid bird is attacking the window. I'm not fond of birds in general, but this one is irritating me yesterday all day from the crack of dawn, and I know because I was in here that early, um, until the sun went down, he was attacking that window. And sometimes he flies around and attacks one of the other windows. He must have a nest in the tree nearby. There's a tree right outside the RV. Uh-oh, I'm about to pull my needle off my... This is not cool. I'm going to run out of yarn. So, let me add a little bit. And this is a good opportunity to show you. If you need to attach another skein or change colors. I recently learned this and it was like magic. So you have these two strands you want to attach. So here's what you do. You take one, tie around. See that? I've got a knot and that is going through it. Okay? So now it, it's just loose. It'll slide up and down. Okay? Let me, let me do it again. Show you, let me show you in a different way. So let's just make a knot. So we have this loop, right? Put this through it. If that helps you understand how I'm doing it. And pull it not too tight. Just tight enough that it doesn't slip out. Now, take this end and tie it around this string. So you have tied each one around the other. Okay, so. Can you see that? They, and they slide nice and easy. So pull them together like that. And now, tighten them down. And this one, tighten it down. And pull them together again. And make sure they're each nice and snug and snug together. And then, you want to How can I do this where it's clearer? You want to trim those ends off. Right here. Now, you have a continued strand. I'm all twisted here. You have a continued strand with no ends to weave in. And I usually cut them where they're even they don't even have these little fuzzy ends. Because that sucker is not going to let go. In some cases, if it's real slippery yarn, it might let go. But that stuff's not letting go. Alright. So, now I need to put my darning needle back on. Alright. So let's get over here and finish this thing. I figure you probably are pretty well know what I'm doing now. But I started and I mean to go on. What is the saying? Start the way you mean to carry on? I don't know. See, and there's that knot. It goes, it goes through. And if you were crocheting with it, it probably wouldn't even catch on anything, and you would just make your keep making your stitches, and it would just disappear into the work. And if you wanted to get really technical about joining your yarns, like two um, skeins of the same colorway, you could find a spot in the strand and match your color section so that it doesn't even 
change color. See, this one changes from blue to green. But I'm not worried about it for the sake of this example dog hat. All right, we're just about at the end. And because it's a corner and it's going to have stress, I'm going to do a couple of stitches right here. going to weave it back down and of course the little knot joining them is there we go down between these stitches for a bit. And then up through these stitches. And it's not showing, it's not going to show on one side or the other because I'm using my needle to go through because if you look right here it doesn't show on this side my needles right there see so you can just push it on through some of the stitches and weave it away And you know, I told you I'm paranoid about this, so are we still, where are, I'm on the inside, okay good. Alright, paranoia to the maximum, splitting my strands and making a little just need this to divide this there we go so now I can tie my knot around that stitch and one more for good measure and voila Now, zooming out, we have a little doggy hat. You could put a pom pom on the point or not, it's up to you. Now, for the closure, you're going to want to weave in this tail. I don't feel like doing it right now, but you can use Velcro or, honestly, I think Velcro would be the best bet. This is too closely, you couldn't use a button in there unless we planned for it. We couldn't use a button. Now if you wanted to use a button, all you do is we do your five, when you're doing your five stitches in rows, probably one, two, third row, you would crochet 
two stitches and then chain two, two stitches and then crochet the last that's not that's actually gonna be too many stitches the last two stitches I'll have to do another one where we do a button but I think personally I think cro velcro is better when it comes to putting clothes on dogs so anyway there you have it and just like this so let me know how it works for you I would love to hear if you've tried my uh, pattern here okay now that we finished that project stay tuned next week and we will knit this cute round dishcloth I thought it was a unique design I liked it better than just the square ones and uh, it was pretty simple to knit so stay tuned for next week and we will knit this together thanks for watching